Do you like our theme song? Yeah, it's, it's okay. Great. It's great. <laughs> I played all the parts on this. Oh, okay. did you? <laughs> no, no. I like the monkey uh, rope too. Okay, 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 good. I'm glad you like that. Someone's paying attention. Yeah, exactly. All right, so welcome everybody to another episode of Mini Biking Ain't Easy. I am your host today. My name is Jason. I, as always, I am with producer Zane, keeping us in the lane. I got Bernie's on the ones and twos, and not even the threes today. And special guest today, all the way from Colorado, we have Jeremy Koza. What's up, Jeremy? How you doing? Good, and yourself? Pretty good. So we're on the third day of paint. Yep. Have you gotten anything special out here? Yeah, I did, actually. I did a trade system with Jack and Evan, actually. And okay. So we got Jack from Mini Bike Coalition. Yep. We got Evan from the Go Power Sports team. Yep. And you got a three-way going? Yep. yep. Harry Menage a trois <laughs> yeah. it's, well, it's, a, it's a menage a paint, right? Okay. Exactly, exactly. So, so yeah, tell me what bikes were swapped. So um, Evan hit me up on Messenger, and he's like, hey, I'm picking up this bike, and it's a Fat Tire Sears Roper 1969. Kind of on my bucket list. Been looking for one for about, like, four years. Mm. And I'm like, okay, well, how do we got to make it happen? So I had this really rare uh, bike. It's a... It's an Explorer of some, of some go, sort. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a Thomas Explorer mini bike. And they're a really rare bike. They made a couple models. One of them actually had a lawnmower attachment. So you can mow your lawn, ride nice. a mini bike and mow your lawn. So it was one that I worked a deal out probably five years ago, had to have it. And I actually gave it to my buddy, Lucas, and he rebuilt the bike and we worked a trade to get it back. Okay. And then I ended up picking up a brand new H60 big block motor, uh -huh. ended up sticking that on there and, and showed Evan pictures. And he's like, yeah, I want it. Let's make it happen. I'm it's like, sick. Sounds good. Sounds yeah. great. So I dropped oil in the engine, brought it up here and told him I'm not, I haven't even started the bike. We're going to start it together. First time that engine's ever ran. So we got it all together, got that going. He showed up with his bike and we made the trade and it worked out great. That's crazy. If you were to somewhat give an era or a time frame on that Explorer, what year is that? I would say 1968, 69. That thing looks immaculate. Now, did you touch the seat at all, or is that original um, seat? The seat was actually done by Bill Moon, so okay. it's, it, it was done probably four years ago by him. So right. Good yeah. job, Bill Moon. Yes, Bill, Moon, Bill Moon was the man, so yeah. he took care of it for us. So. How about the paint on that? The paint was actually just spray painted as well. Then did you do that? Luke did when he rebuilt it for the first time. Nicely done. It's a beautiful looking blue. Yep. And then you got the Explorer sticker on there on that, is it the chain guard yep. that it's on? Yep. Now, how did, was that original? That was a repop, so... Okay. I had that one made. Now, how do you go to like an eBay thing that you're searching for? Um, I went through this guy, Jared, back in the day and had him redo it. So I actually had the old decal that was decent, took a picture of it, had it recreated and, yeah. and put in there. The chain guard's all original. So every part on that bike, minus the motor, is original parts for that bike. So. Nice. Now, so the orange bike, the one on your bucket list, yep. the Sears Roper, I was also eyeing that. <laughs> I'm glad that you got it because someone who's going to love it because it's like one of the bikes that I see out here and it just stands out. When I think of a mini bike, I want something unique and special. Yep. That fat tire on there, that big wide, the big wide uh, handlebars yep. as well. I was eyeing that. I was like, all right, whose is that? Who do I need to give money to? And like, oh, it's Jeremy's. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> So good job. Tell me more about this Sears Roper. So it's a 1969 Sears Roper. It has an HS40 motor. Everything appeared to be original. The motor matches the frame. The frame matches everything. Has the original chain guard. And I had it sitting out here. Couldn't figure out why I couldn't get it running. I had to have the beard of knowledge. Rick Watson come over <laughs> yeah. and give me a hand. So we got it running and I've been cruising around this weekend. So it's been great. Dude, that, that is pretty sweet. You want to give a shout out to Lucas or Yeah, anything? so Lucas Sarche, he is my partner actually on Strictly Customs. We started that page together and it kind of started out as a joke, but here we are now with 21,000 members. You guys are besties though. I Absolutely. love seeing you guys hang out. I love he hearing you guys joke around with each other like brothers. Uh, how, how long do you guys go back? We go back about five years I'd say so okay. yeah I mean and it started with mini bikes that's how we met was mini bikes we made a trade he had a little a little mini bike it was like a little Indian they called it a trail mate and okay. we ended up working that out and we made a switch and I gave him a little Coleman for his son nice. started making that connection and hanging out and realized we had a lot of stuff in common yeah <laughs> do you guys live pretty close to yeah, each other yeah we live about 20 miles away so oh that's not bad no, at all no so we get together at his work and we go ride out there and I, and we're just involved with each other and talk to each other all day about bikes. So, <laughs> so he's also involved with Strictly Custom Mini yep. Bikes. Yep. And that's your Facebook uh, group. Yep. And also on Instagram, they can find you how? 
strictly custom mini bike. And so Lucas helps you moderate the yep. channel? Yep, okay. me and him started that together. So So tell me how that, that channel started. We were actually on strictly vintage mini bikes and they were didn't really care for the Predator stuff. So mm. it kind of got, you know, like here we are building these vintage mini bikes that have newer motors on them. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start my own page. Yeah, so how that's, dare you that's guys? How, <laughs> that's how it started, you know, so. Because they wanted everything authentic. Yep. Okay, no Predators allowed though. Yep. And, they, and so is that kind of tough getting old engines up and running though? For me, it's, you're, you're here to have these to ride them to have fun. So, and it's, my thing is real big on customizing. Like it's hard for me to leave stuff stock. That roper is going to stay stock, but yeah. it, it's going to drive me nuts being stock, but it's just the way it needs to stay. I so gotcha. yeah, I mean, and that's kind of how mine and Tim's relationship actually sparked up was I'd be getting all these vintage bikes and he would hit me up and made a trip to Colorado and came and saw me and really? picked those bikes up. And that's how me and him kind of kindled that relationship. And I got involved with you guys. And so how far back do you think you met to it was probably three and a half years ago three and a half years ago yeah so what he contacted you on facebook marketplace or yep. something or yep. and he said hey i see you got some bikes yep and i'm gonna make a trip up there to buy some mini bikes yep okay yep so he came out there and it was actually during one of their south fork rides and okay he yeah. made the trip from all the way there to about four hours away to my house and came did up he and have the rv no he brought his pickup okay did he have my dad with him? Yes, he did. Okay, I remember this trip now. Yeah. I remember yeah. him saying that, oh, I found a mini bike near here. I'm like, you're crazy. I don't know what you're trying to do, but okay, yep. now we know it's to go meet you. Yep. Okay, well, that's awesome. Now I know where you guys all started. Yep, so that's kind of how we started, and we've been spending a lot of time. I talk to him about daily on the phone, and we go over stuff, and I found him. I think you guys have a handful of stuff in your shop oh, yeah. for me, so yeah. yep, it's definitely a joy. The hunt's what I'm after. Is like I don't really care too much about owning the bikes. It's finding them, learning the history about them and then passing them on to somebody that will do something with them or rebuild them you know how far are you willing to go for a mini bike it all depends a lot of my stuff colorado is pretty rich in that stuff so okay. it's finding the right people and i spent a lot of time online looking and finding on marketplace and everything like that and i got a few connections on guys that ask me questions and then i'll say how much you know yeah. and if i can't afford it i'll just kick it right over to him and we'll make a deal and work it out that way now is there a holy grail mini bike that you're after now not really off the top of my head. I just kind of styles everything for me. I really want a simplex bike. Like that's kind of oh, okay. something that's on my Isn't list. Isn't there one like yeah, the there's red two of them right over there. there. Yeah, have, you, yeah. have you talked to them? Yeah, I've talked to them, and those ones are kind of customized, which is what I like. But I'd kind of want one to start off on my own. I kind of like the ratty look. I yeah. kind of like you know. I don't do a lot of painting and powder coating and stuff. I just kind of leave mine rough because they're meant to ride, and that's yeah. what I use them for. So have you checked out the rat rod looking simplex at our shop that's up on the Raptors? I don't think I've seen that one. Oh, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> we haven't touched it along with Tim's stuff. You know, there's 150 bikes aren't being touched. They're yeah. just out there. Yep. Uh, but this thing, when we go back to the shop, if you walk in through the front door, it's top right. It's just hanging up there. This thing is beautiful. It's immaculate, but it's not ride ready, but it is rat rotted out. Yeah. Okay. I'll send you a picture of it. You may be able to talk Tim into it. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, he's a hard guy to buy stuff from. <laughs> Especially for real? Okay. So he has 150 bikes. How many bikes do you think you roughly? Have? I have right around 33 bikes. Okay. So, and they all range from sitting in a frame state. And so my big thing is I'll buy them and I get a mental image and then I got to execute that. And then I'll either pass it on to someone else. And that's the other thing is that the money that I utilize for my mini bikes has only been from mini bikes. I don't oh. take anything out of my family's money. It's all buy, sell, and trade. So that's kind of how I could keep this Dude, hobby. How alive. cool is that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, my, I work for my family, but then, I, you know, I have my own little side hustle just to keep this kind of stuff going. So I'm curious, what then is your main um, So I do underground gas and electric. I run about four crews doing that stuff. Okay. So yeah, supervisor. I've been doing that for about 15 years. So working 60 hours a week, it's pretty tough to have time for this stuff. But yes, I can I, imagine. I make it happen. <laughs> but then you also need space for all these bikes. You have like a garage just filled with racks with bikes on them or yep. what? I actually have old dune buggy, Volkswagen dune buggy I have to keep at my friend's house. <laughs> just for your yep. money bike? <laughs> Kick the wife out of the garage just so I got room for everything that I got. You have enough room to actually garage on these bikes in there? Yes. Yep. Okay. Barely. I got kayak hoists that I actually 
raise them up into the rafters with. So I have, oh, nice. I, I mean, that's kind of how I got it. I got shelves with bikes on them, parts everywhere. I don't throw anything away. I like to try to utilize everything I got. Nice. Um, I'm building a bar stool racer right now. So and it's just all out of scrap parts. So just stuff I got sitting around. Now, is there a limit of how many mini bikes you want to cap yourself off at? Are you like 33? That's my max. I don't need more. Or you're like, hey, I'll go up to 50. The market's kind of slowed down. So I buy a lot of this stuff to like resell, rebuild. So I end up sticking with it. But for me, that's just kind of an investment because it's going to, it's going to come back around again. You know, like yeah. people fight, see me riding and they ask about it and then I'll sell them in my neighborhood. And then there's a little gang of bikes riding around and exactly. <laughs> doing all that stuff. So it, it's something that's definitely, again, I know is going to pick up. So I don't mind holding on to them, but I try to keep, I got like four or five bikes that I like really ride. One of them is at Sportsman. Me and Lucas actually brought them out to the to Colorado, to Colorado with, to ride with you guys. Yeah. We both stripped ours down, got them sandblasted, working on paint now, having them ready, and the, and they're strictly going to be to tackle that dang Tewksbury Trail. <laughs> so, what are the other bikes that you kind of keep on your ready to ride fleet? So I got the Sportsman, like I said. I'm working on a Rup right now that's stretched out. It's got a Roper tank on the top of it, nice. and it's got the 10 inch wheels. So I'm working on that. One of my other big ones I got is a Track 2, Murray Track 2, that I'm putting 12-inch wheels on. Very cool. Kind of making a flat track looking bike on yeah. it. So those are the two that I'm really focusing on right now. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot in the works, though. So <laughs> Yeah. And then you also have a battle-ready, tried-and-true. Uh, you got a Trailmaster, right? Yes, I do. You still yep. ride that thing yes, around? Yes, I do. That thing is a ton of fun. Yep. They, they're great bikes. And then I'm actually getting the new front suspension, so that should be in hopefully in two weeks. And having that set up and ready to go because I'm going for the 180 so you guys need to watch out for that one. Yeah. So, so let's <laughs> chat about that. How did you do at the second annual GPS 180? So that that course was awesome first okay, of all. Good. It was great it was hard and it seemed like on every lap the train changed just because yes. the rocks coming up everything like that. We were up there in the top just cruising it was me and my friend Marcus that I brought out with me. Yeah. He's never ridden before so it was his first okay. time coming out. So I figured I'd get him out let show him kind of what I'm into and, and what I do. And we were doing really good. We were up there in the top three, I bet you. And and then halfway through the race, a little over halfway, I blew the motor on my bike, and oh, we ended up no. not being able to finish the race. So and what was motor tough. was on? That was it a two twenty five? It was a two twenty five, or no, it was a, a two twelve that Taylor built. Okay. And then once that got shelled out, I got the two twenty five on it now. So I got that all ready. It's ready to rock and roll. So a little bit of dialing in. I think it's going to have it this year. So, so the GPS one eighty, your two changes is they're going to be new motor and new. Front suspension. Yep. Anything else you plan on doing with it? Not really. That bike's dialed in. I think it's ready. So I'm just it, gonna get everything going for it and see what happens. What do you do as prep for the 180? Do you do other races or is it just like you so mentally? I also run another page called Denver Mini Bike, okay. and that's kind of what we started out as, and that's like more or less street riding and going out and getting with people and doing that kind of stuff. So we go do that every couple of weeks. We'll go down there and we'll do a ride out and hang out with them. But for preparation, for me, it's just getting out there and putting the throttle to the metal and <laughs> not caring. <laughs> Caution to the wind, you know? I'm about not to say, sure. like, that terrain is pretty tough. You do have to, I mean, if you want to be competitive, it is good to swap out with someone because you can easily get fatigued out there, right? Yes, yeah. I, I think the most I did was four laps at one time, and it's pretty tiring. Ooh, so. Okay, so four laps, and then Marcus, how many did he do? He would do one to two. Okay, to kind of give you laps, a break. Yep, and then I'd get back in and take it. I mean, those rock drop-offs, that was the funnest yeah. part because, I mean, for me, it's my mind shuts off, and it's just straight throttle, get in there, pass whoever you can, and you don't think about, like, like what could happen if I wreck? You just think about getting up <laughs> getting there. And, there. Yeah, yeah, and those power cords were something else too that yeah. ran through there, trying to hit those at the right angle, make sure you're. So you're not sliding all the <laughs> yeah, way around. Yeah, because that, that would take you too. So. Do you think you'll bring Lucas this next round? Me and him are actually planning on it. So, and then Marcus was planning on bringing another friend to race in their own bracket too. So, oh, nice. and Lucas is building a Baja, so we're gonna kind of compare them, see what one we're gonna race in. So he's got a Baja that he's got a swing arm attachment on that he's building up right now and getting it ready. So nice. he's dumped quite a bit of time and money into that and seeing if we can get something that can compete out there. So so if you guys are listening, November 11th is our third annual Go Power Sports 180. If you want to get after it and race against Jeremy and Lucas and Marcus and the whole <laughs> gang, come on out, build a bike. Do you have any words of wisdom to people who are going to be the first time racing out here? Just understanding, like, I guess, like, we are out there to race, but just
just to be polite, make sure that we're not cutting people off, not make sure we're not ramming into each other, and just that must watch have that. happened to you. Yeah. You got rammed, didn't you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> did I actually, you really? yeah, I ended up in a tree for a second, did but I got really? yeah, I got oh, out of that. No. Oh, but man. it's just part of it. But just just knowing that all those guys are there to do the same thing that you are. Man, I can't believe Stanley put you into the tree like that. <laughs> Is that who it was? No, no okay. I don't even know who it was. <laughs> Right, we will find them out. We'll definitely <laughs> review the race footage. <laughs> Nice. All right, so are you also coming to Pull Start Picnic? Yes, I am, and I'm not bringing anything for that. I'm just going to be flying out to hang out because it's too what? close to this trip. It's too close to this You could have brought, you could have won so many trophies and categories. I know, it's for Especially me, the vintage. Hey, it'd be perfect to just get out and look at it this year. But if you would have bring 10 bikes out, yeah. oh my goodness, you would have such a dope collection just to just yeah. to look at. Well, I'm going to get some ideas going so that way I can join the one where you buy the bike here okay. and get it ready and going so I can just kind of get a game plan on what I want to do, how I want to do it. And yeah. be able to do it and try to build the bike most of the time out here next year to be fun too before I even head back to Colorado. Yeah. So. Now do you plan on making it out to a Joe's mini bike reunion? That's on my bucket list. I was going to do last year but I'm trying to free up more time and do the stuff I enjoy and yeah. maybe get the kids out there with me too one or twice and just make sure that they can see nice. what's going on. So. And how old are the kids? My daughter's 14 and my son is 10. Oh so they're mini bike ready then. Yep. Do yep. they ride? Yep. Does your whole family mini bike and ride? Yep. We'll go cruise around the neighborhood and do that stuff. And I just bought my son one of the little Coleman's you guys had out here for sale. So nice. yeah, just That's a got him one. his own little one that he can do whatever he wants for customizing on it. Thanks. So out here we had a paid special mini bike, which is like the Coleman that's raw frame, but you get a 98 cc engine. That thing will pull me like 25 miles an hour. Yeah, they're great bikes. And Tim kind of gave me the history on those those bikes. I think he said there's 37 of them. Yeah. American made Coleman's. Yep. Like you just cannot go wrong with that. It's just something that's a conversation piece in my opinion to have one. So I had to pull the trigger and buy one. <laughs> so are you planning on painting it or keeping it raw? I'm thinking about doing a raw look, maybe powder coating it, letting it sit outside and rust and not powder coat, but clear coat the, yeah. the bike and kind of keep it the nostalgic look. And They look pretty mean in raw form. Yep. Not yep. a bad way to go. And I'm gonna get the guys from Cars and Cameras, sign the fenders for him, get a picture with it. So. Are they huge fans of cars and cameras? Yes, so my son are they this. Are they geeking out that you're out here hanging with them? Oh, yeah. R racing them in go-karts? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that was what's great about the 180s, to be able to race those guys. And, yeah. And one killer rider out there is Bobby Hammond. That guy can oh, move. Good job to you, Bobby. Yeah. First place overall. <laughs> yep. You, he was nuts. So, you, you did bring family out here, though. Not yet. Nope. No. Oh, yeah, I brought my dad. I'm sorry. I was about to say, yeah. man, that was a segue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. got so, you got on your, that one. your dad here, and you got someone else? Just my dad just your dad yep how was that trip it's great me and him have grown up like he's kind of gotten me into the swap meet stuff and that's kind of where this all really started was seeing a mini bike at a swap meet years ago and being like okay i want that and then you kind of turns into an addiction and that's what it is is like i gotta have it i gotta have it and it's just it's a matter of like knowing what you're looking at knowing the price readiness knowing to leave yourself a little cushion so if you have to sell it, you got something to make on the end and not lose anything on it, so. Nice, so I wanna know more about how it all started, but first, we're gonna take a break, hear a few words from our sponsors. We'll be right back. should have more than enough footage I'm going to break this on down start editing and see what we come up with engine looks like inside of a little rascal frame 
great fit. footage uploaded onto the laptop. Let's go ahead and get this edited. Okay, so now you're just going to waste everyone's time on this? No, I'm not going to waste their time on it. I'll make it go fast. Don't worry. Alright, so here's a quick preview of the edit. Not bad, quick, simple, easy. Whoa. And we're back. All right, so you just touched on mini bikes at swap meets. You said that mini biking kind of all started from these swap meets? Yes. So we've been big into cars our whole life, me, my dad, my brother, and my dad's always helped us out with getting that stuff rolling, doing some cars, and, and then we were just kind of slowly got into it, started talking about it, and I bought my first mini bike at a swap meet. How old do you think you were? Uh, I was probably <laughs> 17, honestly. Nice. Nicely <laughs> so, done. so it started kind of at a late age for me. That's all and, right. And it was, I think it was even just a little Baja, so just something small, but ended up picking that up and doing a little bit of customizing on it and then seeing that you can build them up, you can make them faster, figuring out there's drag racing, figuring out there's other racing, following things on Facebook, and then it just picked up from that point on. So, so what about mini bikes out of everything? What kind of really drew you on? Just the fact that there's so many different styles out there? Or what? Yeah, there's just an unlimited amount of styles that you can get. The people that I've met is why it keeps me going, because it is it's almost like a family like you could talk to somebody build a relationship on that like all the people that I'm closest to started talking about mini bikes like here we are grown adults playing on kids toys and it's exactly. just like it's something that brings you back to your childhood so it's a that huge is, part of it that's definitely special about the mini bike community and something that's been a common theme throughout I guess all of our podcasts is getting to know that people aren't trying to be competitive they're not trying to hoard information yep. everyone is just friendly everyone wants you to be a part of it like you got a two wheels awesome you're part of my team let's yep. do this is all hanging and that's out. the one thing that we really follow on strictly customs is, is that page doesn't have problems like we don't have to kick people out we don't bullies. have to yeah. exactly like it's just a matter of hey this person took their time to build it it's their thing you don't need to sit there and bash it like exactly. just help each other out that's what it's all about are there corners of the mini biking community that are a little gatekeepy for lack of a better word or is it it's, most mini bikers are pretty most everyone i've like, met has been pretty chill yeah yeah i mean like some of the pages are kind of run a little bit rogue i feel like so that's okay. what it came down to I don't understand. I guess I just don't get that aspect of it. I, well, yeah, I feel like in every hobby, you can have the people who are like, no, if you haven't been doing this for 20 plus years, you don't know about yep. it. And it's like, yep. well, no, but like we want people to know about exactly. it. Exactly. You want exactly. people to get in. I want people riding next Yep. To me. So, yep. yeah. So that our slogan, mini biking ain't easy, kind of means a few different things. First off, I want to make it as easy as possible so that anyone yep. can just get into it. What's nice about the Coleman's being at a cheap price, just so hopefully more kids will get involved into it. I want them asking questions on Facebook. I want them messaging us. I want them calling us just because I honestly want to grow this community. But also mini biking ain't easy. As you can tell, a lot of things just don't work or fit or uh, you just have trouble finding yep. the parts you need. Do you have any recent experiences where mini biking truly wasn't easy whether you're customizing or putting something together every day <laughs> <laughs> you got any, you got anything anything, anything customizing brakes are a pain in the butt sometimes trying to get things lined out figured out for that aspect getting wheels to fit and 
one of my big specialties lately is like lowering slamming bikes kind of like the giveaway bike like yeah. being able to do that and making sure i don't have all the fancy equipment i don't have jigs like yeah. trying to do that stuff on my own in the garage is, and the learning curves is where it comes down to so that, so would you as a consumer learn, want to see more bolt-on capabilities like do absolutely you, like okay. your guys' bolt-on kits so far have been amazing okay and you guys take like really good like listening and you guys can adapt that stuff and it's cool seeing stuff that you've kind of had a hand in on suggesting like goes on bikes you know yeah it's a huge thing like i know that you guys are coming out with that new gas tank can't yeah, wait to see that sweet. and that's actually based off of the super bronc tank and so you that, brought over yeah i sold to tim at pate last year so yeah. it's cool and it's just brings back that nostalgic to like these these newer bikes and, you, and they yeah. fit everything something that's an easy bolt on yeah. something you can't find and you can get it just like the go power sports wheels those are amazing i have nice. them on a set of go-karts Heck yeah. a couple bikes i got a few sets on my shelf just ready to be used so dude that's what it's, i'm talking it's about it's what it's about the bolt on kits that the swing arm kits you guys are doing for the Megamoto 212s are awesome. Yeah. The swing arm kits for the 80s is sweet too. Like it's just, it's amazing what you guys are coming up with and doing. As a mini biker, is going fast, does that really interest you? Or is it more like the collection part of it or both? It's both and comfort's a huge thing okay. for me. Like being able to ride something reliable that you can just take out yeah. and rip on. My favorite bikes that I started out with was a sportsman mini bike. And why I, it's such an attachment to me is they were made in Denver, Colorado. Okay. They were only made for a few years. They went out of business someone sued him for wrecking their bike and getting hurt Dang. so and they stopped producing and i believe it was 1960 so a lot of their bikes are earlier and that's my go-to bike for off-roading that's my go-to bike for everything and that's my current project that i'm actually like working on right now is trying to get that one going taking my time on it some of the bikes i rush through just to get them done see how they look some of them I'm taking my sweet time on and getting them dialed in just right. So. You're savoring every second of it. Oh, exactly, exactly. So, my wife doesn't see it that way, but. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> so, I mean, so spending money on mini bikes, relatively, they're a whole lot more affordable than customizing a car exactly. or a bigger motorcycle. And, and the amount of room that you save, you could do multiple projects at one time. And, yeah. and it is, it's just about being able to meet people. Like, yeah. I've talked to all these guys that are out here so many times on Messenger, but to get out and see them personally, it's like, yeah. we didn't skip a beat. It's like we known each other forever and it, yeah. it just makes it easy it's a great way to like start a conversation and build friendships so for a couple hundred bucks you picked up a coleman ct 100 u what is the most expensive mini bike you bought let me think about that one and how me. much <laughs> and what? how much did you tell your wife you bought it <laughs> I would say, because on top of my head, I mean, I don't know if you actually bought Paul's Trailmaster. I feel like that just is an expensive bike, but I didn't know a vintage bike, since they are vintage, they're rare, if you're spending over a thousand on something yeah, like that. Yeah, you can. I had a Bonanza BC 1300, which was a 10 inch spoke model. I think I paid 800 bucks for the frame, had it shipped out. Then I ended up getting uh, Evil Ed to build me a tank. That was nice. a few hundred bucks to have that on there. And then I put a Hodaka Ace 100 on there. <laughs> so, I mean, it, the, you can definitely add those prices up and now if you were to sell that you would do you feel like you would ever get your money back i sold it and i got my money back look at you <laughs> yeah and then the taco i had out here last year i paid oh. pretty good for that one just because it was already done and yeah. and ready so that was a cool bike it was a great bike it went on to a guy in nebraska who rides it around everywhere so and That's he's an, he's an like older that. gentleman so it's perfect to just see that stuff and people say hey thanks for the bike i love it still ride it it's yeah. a good feeling shout out to the state of nebraska yeah there we, we actually have them out here come on out nebraska everyone okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking of that, I'm in from Nebraska too, so you're welcome. <laughs> you are from Nebraska? Yep. Oh, that's where Bernie's from. Yep. Scott's Bluff. Oh, Scott's Bluff too. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're so, brothers. <laughs> how'd you make the move from Nebraska to Colorado? Uh, my parents moved out here when I was younger. Okay. Yep, so I still got a lot of family out there. Okay. Yep, a lot of connections for it, so anything with motors have been in our family forever. Like we, that's how we connect that's how our relationships start like my dad and his uncle they go through and they build cars together and my okay. uncle owns a shop where he's got a bunch of vintage cars mainly fords from the 30s all the way up to 50s yeah. he's got probably about 15 of them and collects coca-cola stuff so that's how the swap meet stuff started and kind of just snowballed in there wow so are there other huge swap meets that you will be attending or is this the biggest one this or? is the biggest one we do a lot of little local ones around so um, and those ones are pretty good too but this is the one that i count on i did pretty good though didn't walk out of here spending a lot of money sold a lot of yeah. stuff so it was worth it for me are you still going to walk around today and try to find anything yeah i'll probably walk around a little bit more do you have your eye on anything so far uh 
kind of got what I wanted. There's really nothing out here that really like hit. I got a set of pocket bike wheels, just some stuff, okay. some parts to bring home, but just kind of limiting what I'm bringing home. The wife was pretty excited, yeah. sold some stuff. <laughs> but you are still bringing back a, yeah. a, a, a bike. Did you see the yellow Rokon that was up over yes, here? Yes, I love those bikes. Have you ever owned a Rokon? No, I have not. Something that not interests yet. you? Yes, okay. <laughs> they have. Speaking of Rokon, so, and like meeting people, I met this gentleman named Wayne Schmeckel. He's out in Johnstown area, and he has the most beautiful collection of mini bikes. He has a sheet written with every mini bike that was ever made, and it's ever? In, yes. So, okay. And he's got a good handful of those bikes. And what? he's always looking for those bikes. He's got some of the rare stuff. He has those Rokons. He has them brand new in a box. So like it's one of his biggest collections and it's only like 20 minutes away from my house. Never knew about this until probably two years ago. It's not like a museum. It's just a private guy who's got- Private it. collection inside of uh, Liberty Firearms actually. So which is pretty Whoa. crazy. Whoa. So have you ever walked through this little yes, collection? Yes. He gives me full access to go out there and look through his collection and bring people over. I actually had Harley hooked up with him when he was coming through Colorado yeah. and Harley got to go see his collection and, and see everything he has there. If they're letting Harley in, <laughs> would they let us in with the video? Like not to take his stuff, but just to video it? Absolutely. I can make that happen. Hook that up. We're going to Colorado, boys. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta do a documentary. What's his name? You said William? Uh, Wayne Schmeckel. Will Wayne, Wayne Schmeckel. Schmeckel. Yep. Wayne Schmeckel. My name is Jason. You will be seeing an email here <laughs> after this podcast. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, definitely hook that yep. up. We'd love to meet him. Is there anything else we should ask this Wayne Schmeckel? Not really. I mean, he's just a down to earth guy. They build uh, slaughterhouses, is what he does. He builds slaughterhouses for the meat packing. Okay. So he does a lot of work in Texas, too, and everywhere else throughout the United States. He's a huge, avid car collector. He's got three warehouses full of cars cars too so he's got an amazing collection and it's just all his stuff just stuff that he's built and he has his own in-house body shop that does his work for him this guy sounds poor though <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. and i and i actually picked up a taco from him and tim's got that now so is it the green one that's is it the green taco? not the green one no okay. it's an older swing arm taco so nice how would you feel if go power sports bought the taco brand I would love it. Okay. Just making sure. I, I don't know. Is that something that's I, I mean, you're talking no, about? I mean, it's been floated every once in a while. We're always looking at other frames yeah. and manufacturers. You, you never know. Yeah, I just be, didn't know how you felt about it. It'd be a smart move. Like, oh. that's for one of the first parts I ever found was a clutch cover for a taco, and I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> Do you currently own any tacos? No, I don't right now. I'm not okay. on plan. Just push them off? Yep. Okay. <laughs> so, I, I have a question for you. Yep. Um, for the future of mini bikes, since you, you spend a lot of time working on these kind of like older bikes and doing customization to them and stuff, but where do you see modern bikes going in terms of their design? Do you see, uh, are, are we going back to a classic look with them? Or do you think people are going to find new ways to improve I, on the what I, already exists? I feel like that some of them are already, like even just the little Coleman's, they kind of got that classic look. And I mean, you got your bigger, beefier frames and they're at a certain point where you're like, okay, is this a motorcycle? That's or a motorcycle. Is this a yeah. 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 <laughs> Tiny motorcycle. Exactly. Or a medium so, motorcycle. I think they can make a good change on some of the stuff. Like I, I love the what you guys did with the Rascals and the Little Rascals and brought back that old school look. Like yeah. that's what it's about for me. Is there a vintage style you'd like to see come back? I like all the little Indians, even though the frames are a little small, something along those lines. Those are really cool bikes. Okay. I love those. Not really off the top of my head. Because, I mean, you already got a company that makes the Frijole kind of knockoff looking ones. Yeah. But those are pretty cool. Those have always been something that I've wanted. So I bought one of those ones, built it up, and sold it. And yeah. So not really off the top of my head, though. Oh, okay. Cool. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Bring them all back. <laughs> run them around, guys. Yeah, run them around again. So we plan on coming up with a few different versions of the Rascal, like our Raffle 10 bike. That's a slammed Rascal. Yep. Would you like to see, I guess, a reproduced, Absolutely. I guess, kit that you Absolutely. could do? Absolutely, yes. Does that make it too easy that you can just bolt everything on on that frame? No, I think it's a great idea. I mean, you could do all kinds of things with the frames, which is great. You guys are using those lock collars a lot. Yeah. You can almost do a lock collar setup on the back of it to where you can make your ride height wherever you want. Kind of like that. Rick Watson's exactly ride. yeah okay. that you can just kind of make your own adjustments and build it exactly how you want so not everyone's exactly the same. you have a hundred different things you could do now would you ever do a drag mini bike yes 
and no. Like I, I love trail riding. That's yeah. where I'm at. Like drag racing's fun, but one hit down the track and then you're waiting. <laughs> yeah. And I've seen that's also with mini bikes. There's so many different genres within mini bikes. And what's also great about mini bikes is since they are affordable, you can be in a lot of those genres. Exactly. You can have a trail bike, a street cruiser bike, a drag bike, and I think that's what a lot of when I come across a lot of our customers, they all have at least two or three mini bikes. Yep. You got 33 of them, <laughs> yep. which is pretty cool. But you drive four or five that are constantly going right now. Oh yeah. And none of them are drag bikes. Nothing, no, nothing right now. If we came out with a drag little rascal bike, would you take one and build one up and at least have one? You know I would. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know I would. Okay. So aside from this, is there anything outside of mini bikes that you follow that you are interested in or passionate about? Cars, okay. Volkswagens, old Chevys, that okay. kind of stuff. What year Volkswagens? So I got a 71 fiberglass body dune buggy. Before that, I had a 71 chop top Super Beetle and then a 69 Volkswagen Beetle that was had the front end raked out with no fenders, rat rod style with a Ford motor in the back of it. So. Do you still have these cars? No, I got rid of them. I got I got the Doom Buggy still, okay. so that's the one that is mine now. <laughs> and as far as Chevys, what kind of Chevys are you talking about? Square bodies. Okay. And then my dad's actually currently looking for a PPV Caprice right now. Nice. You didn't see any out here, have you? Nope. Okay. There was an auction that was out here, but they all sold before we had a chance to go look at any of them. So, Dang, so he, he is heavily looking for one? Yes. Well, hopefully he finds one. Everyone keep an eye out. <laughs> yeah. Anyone listening, if you have a PPV... Police, police Caprice car. Yeah. Well, what year? He wants a 2014. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw that one over there. Yeah. The bubble window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you guys like to hear about some of my inspirational people for a mini bike? I would love that. Right after this ride. Right after this ride. <laughs> <laughs> and now a word from Cars and Cameras. Right. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> yeah, riff on that. Like I said, Lucas, great guy. Fun to work with, fun to do things with. Another one is Sam Blackburn. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys know oh, Sam. For sure, yeah. yeah, he's a great guy. He actually flew out to Colorado with his wife and they came out and spent the weekend with us. We went up to Estes Park, just talked about mini bikes, nice. did stuff like that. He's a great inspiration. The stuff he builds and comes out with is just above par, mm -hmm. just new, crazy. Those Harrisons are just. Those Harrisons are sweet. Yep, you know they're an one, amazing right? bike. Yep. Okay, there's yep. word on the street that we are, that Taylor got his hands on one. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Actually, That's awesome. what is your favorite build that you've seen? Like, what's the, what is the build that has inspired you the most that someone else has done? Mainly, like, the stuff that really got me into it was Sam's Harrison's. Just oh, the, okay. like, the customization, the way that he does the fiberglass fenders with the lights underneath them. And Ooh, okay. He does all kinds of crazy things that you just don't see and... You know, and that's how him and his son go together. His son's got a sweet speedway that he built. It's just cool to just see people okay. get along and do that kind of stuff together. That's nice. awesome, man. Who else? Who else is a, an inspiration? Um, Harley yeah. is. Well, Harley's uh, Harley? a great guy. Yeah, I met him through selling him a bike last year at Pate, and me and him hit it off. And his collection's great. He bounces stuff off of me. I bounce stuff off of him. We kind of do a lot of trading, bartering. Like, he bought a bike for me today. Decided he didn't want it. I helped him sell it. So for real, he yeah. bought which bike? He bought a sportsman for me. And, okay. And then ended up going somewhere else. But how dare you, Harley? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that you got hooked up with Harley because he seems to be also in that collector's type of uh, personality, yes. which I do love. I guess a lot of everyone like like Harley and Tim, they love Hornet bikes. Does that interest you at all? I like the Hornets. I really am looking for a super deluxe with a rear suspension. We don't see those too often. Okay. I've been looking for one for probably two years. Harley's been helping me keep my eyes out for those. So he hasn't hopefully. found one yet? Not yet, not yet. But that's kind of my next bucket list. And he'd be the guy who'd know. I feel like oh, he yeah. has his finger on that pulse right, when it comes <laughs> yeah, to horns, Yeah, he does. He's, he's, he's good at it. And he's the same way. He'll see stuff up in Fort Collins area that he wants. And I'll buy him for him when I come out here, meet up with him and give him to him or put him in Tim's stash piles. <laughs> I could just bring a whole load yeah. down for them at one time. Just throw it up on the wall in the yeah. shop. like yeah. But we also have a Hornet specialist out here. We have Tim, another Tim right yes do you know much about his collection um i know i've seen him around i've seen some of his stuff i've met him finally twice last year and this year but yeah he's got some amazing stuff built some really cool raptors like he's got some really good stuff heck yeah man so you are loading up your trailer what is going back what are you taking back home then it's just going to be the um roper fat tire roper. not the go-kart i really want it but the room space so Jeremy's been looking at the Go Power Pig. If you guys remember, I'll put that Go Power Pig video right here. 
but the thing is a monstrosity. That Murray kilowatt yeah. thing? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you look awesome in it. I feel like if anyone was to have it, you would be perfect for it. <laughs> I know. It comes down to the finances part of it, though. I'd love to see that, that go-kart finish, though. That'd be a huge thing for me. You were the guy for that. I know I am. <laughs> do you get into go-karts? I yeah. mean, so we got mini bike, and yeah, do you go-kart? Yep. I started building. I built a couple off-road go-karts for me and my family to start out with. Did some customizing, lifted it did some suspension work on it and then I've uh, built a couple I've had my hands in the racing go-karts for here and there don't really care for them they're kind of hard to get in and out of and yeah. Oh, yeah. not very practical so the off-road is where I really enjoy now are these Trailmaster go-karts are they just older go-karts older go-karts like Mancos, Mancos? And, yeah okay. what's your favorite trail to ride on you said you're really into the trail riding stuff like but the ones that you're <laughs> allowed to talk about so I'm really up to doing the Tewksbury. I did not do it very well last year. Didn't have my stuff geared right. Couldn't get up it all the way. So this year, you that's didn't? no. So did you get stuck on the very first hill or towards? About the halfway hill? up the hill. Oh my! And so then Luke, you... and the great part was is we got all the way up and then Luke comes down and realizes where's my gas cap. <laughs> so <laughs> he turned around and he walked up the oh, whole no. Tewksbury and found it at the very top and had oh. to walk all the way down. Oh, so, but I don't remember you being in my group. We, we went up on our own and ran up there and rode, me and him did. <laughs> but just you two? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on what bikes again? Uh, the, the Sportsman's. Sportsman's. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Is there much suspension on those? Yeah, they got front and rear suspension and we beefed them up. Your guys' nitrogen shocks running on the backs of them and we're actually both adapted the front to be able to have those too, just to yeah. give us full cushion. So we're going to be able to get those ones up and going. We got our motors built. I think we got gearing right to be able to tackle these hills. So do you remember what your gearing was that got you stuck? I don't even remember off the top of my head. Bigger is better. I think most people ran a 6 to 1, but a 7 to 1 type of gear ratio will yeah. usually just walk up there. Cause I believe that's what our Tim Yoakum went up there with, with like a 10 to a 72 yep. or something. It's like going to be a, all that bottom end. That's what you need to be able to tackle that. Yeah, because you're not really wide open at no. all. I don't know. Tim that. just kind of floated up there, man. I don't know how he did it. It looked like he was just rolling <laughs> over it and just went right yeah, up Yeah, I watched top. the videos of you yeah. guys doing it and we sat there and we're like, oh, we gotta do it. And then Isaac doing it on that rigid tail. That was the most amazing thing <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Just to hear that, everyone's like, nah, that, that can't be him. And like, oh my goodness. Yep. Isaac actually made it. We thought we were he was gonna camp there that night and we were had to go back the next day and find him. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just the fact that he actually did it was Yeah, I, I pulled up into the garage because I showed up after they left and then they're like, yeah, he rode up a trail and that. And I'm like, my God. You should have seen the Chronic bass back problems coming your yeah. way. So we stopped to film them in the first half, and just going up the first hill is already a doozy. If you can't do the first hill, you might as well turn back around yep. and call it a day. The first hill, he was on the ground, he couldn't breathe because that bike <laughs> was so crummy. He was on the ground, everyone's trying to give him air. I'm like, yep, he ain't making it the rest of this trip. He does not have another three hours in him. And then at the 180, when we came down, I saw the bike up at the top rack, and I was showing Charles, I was like, hey, your bike's up there. He's like, I wonder if the toolkit's still in the bag. So it he was. Climbed, yeah, he climbed up there and pulled it out. It's pretty comical. Yeah. All right, so we are going to take a quick break. We'll be back after these messages. Mini bikes, go-karts, we have the parts, tools, and the know-how. And after 60 years, we still sell fun. But for the next 60 years, we're going to be so much more. And we're back. So, outside of mini biking, do you watch any other YouTube channels? Are you watching any YouTube channels that we should be following? Just the same ones you guys are Cars and Cameras, Build Break Repeat, Redbeard's Garage. Yeah. Now, do you watch any of those channels or any channels to get you over a problem? Like how to put something together or how to get an engine to work or whatever? Not necessarily. I, I like to, I'm a real big problem solver. So, that's one of my things is like I like to try to figure it out on my own, do the stuff on my own. So, just kind of just soaking it all in and trial and error is my best way to learn. 
I guess I fall into that. I use YouTube Academy, I think is the word. <laughs> YouTube University. U- YouTube University, I forgot. <laughs> but usually, if I have a problem, I kind of start there and see what has happened, and then I kind of formulate how am I going to approach it. I don't know if you used YouTube in the same way, but it sounds like you just sit there in front of it and figure it out yourself. Yep, and, and Lucas is a genius. He's a field mechanic for life, so oh, nice. he's right around the corner. Hey, got a question. <laughs> so that, that definitely Utilize that out. and bounce it off of him, because you can't do this on your own. you got to have yeah. people around you to help you out. Oh, for sure. Outside of YouTube, do you Netflix or HBO or Amazon Prime, anything? Any series I should be watching? I mean, we're all caught up on Stranger Things right now, so that's okay, yeah, one. Okay. I love that show. Yes. Love is blind. Um, Yep. And then I'm excited. Are you for real? No. Oh, neither am I. <laughs> Jason's like, I've been looking for someone to talk to about this. Uh, you don't I, want to talk about how Dirty Marshall just got done? I said, no, I gonna... Unless we're talking about Paw Patrol, no. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah, and then we actually just got tickets for the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie. So what? I'm actually looking forward to that, yes, too. Yeah. Now, are you a big Marvel fan? Off and on. I mainly do it for my kids. So my son's really into that stuff. So just being able to watch him and have something that our whole family's into is pretty good. So, so aside from family stuff, do you have an all-time favorite movie? Can't go wrong with Dumb and Dumber. Yes! Hey, <laughs> that is honestly my number one movie. Yeah. All right, so how, how old are you? I am 38. Okay. I'm like 37, so of course. That is, I quote that thing all day, every day, so I'm glad that you love yep, them. No, that's, any of those like slap comedy type movies are just where it's at. Nice. So your favorite rom com? You know. don't have any? Okay, I don't have never any. Mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> cut that, cut that, cut that. Me, myself, and I read, right? That's, that's not that's, a rom com, is it? Well. 50 first dates. Yeah, okay, that's not too bad. All right. <laughs> okay, I know exactly. It's The Wedding Singer for me. Oh, it's that's absolutely a good one. Yeah, The Wedding that Singer. That is a rom com. I like Wedding Crashers. Is that a is that a rom com? I would say that's a com. More of a com. That's more of a com. Okay. Yeah. That's a com com. Okay. It's com. It's a comedy comedy. And then what? there's another movie that I love, and it's not a very common one, but Strange Wilderness. If you haven't seen it. What's Strange Wilderness? Yeah, give Let's me talk a, about yeah, that. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> it, so these guys are trying to hunt down Bigfoot. It's mm. just an absolutely ridiculous, over the top movie. Is it more ridiculous than Cocaine Bear? Have you seen Cocaine I Bear? I have not, but my dad's been talking about it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> It just came out on Peacock, so I, I watched it, and I'm glad I watched it just to know what's out there. But I don't know; it's definitely out there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who to talk it's about. It's not this based with. off of the true story, like they say. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I heard the bear after that died like two minutes afterwards. Yeah, I think it just went crazy and just laid down. But to see what this bear does, it, it goes ripping nuts. people's arms off. I don't want to give away too much, but yes, <laughs> okay, that is the movie. So we just gave it away. <laughs> That's the whole movie. All right. How about you, Zane? What do you what, what do you what kind of series are you watching these days? Me? Um, I'm actually I'm watching Succession. Oh. I, I really like Succession. Oh. I laugh at it. I think it's probably one of the most smartly written shows out right now. What's that about? It's kind of like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's in like an empire of business people. It's like a business empire, and it's kind of loosely based on the Murdochs. So it's kind of based on Rupert Murdoch and his family. But it's like they kind of just tie in a bunch of like, you know, bad rich people doing bad things to each other and okay. the world. But they're funny about it. It's fun, you know. Yeah. I started season four the last season. It's just word dumpage on me. I, I feel like there's so much talking going on that I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, I, lo- I love it. I love that everything is just these layers of conversation. No one's ever really saying what they mean. It's yeah. all subtextual. I love it. I love it so much. Yeah. <laughs> Do you uh, watch any sports or anything? I'm not a sports person. Ah, neither was Charles. So why no sports? It's just, there's so much other things to do. <laughs> okay. Did you grow up playing any sports? Um, football. That's about it. Played some football. And then I'll occasionally go to hockey games. I enjoy, like, going to, like, games. Dude. I don't like watching stuff. How are your TV. abs doing? Didn't, didn't they get a win last night? Do you, do you follow them at I don't all? really follow them too much. All right. Cut, cut, cut. Cut that out. Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Jason used to play for them, actually. Oh, did you? Uh, yeah. All-time uh, all-star, I believe, for the last 15 years. That's right. Yeah. I'm too small. I'm not that good. <laughs> but you, you were a goalie? I was a goalie. A small Asian goalie playing ice hockey. <laughs> For the abs? I, no, not the oh, abs. I was like, what? I, I did play for Team USA, though. Nice. I did play for the Olympic nice. team, for the junior Olympic team. Wait, really? Yeah. For Are real. you not joking? I'm being dead serious. I have a huge poster that says, Meryl. Oh, that's it's awesome. It's me, like, doing the splits, stopping oh, someone. Cool. Oh, okay. Well, let's get, we're getting a picture of that up <laughs> okay. here right now. That's going to be on the back next. That was, <laughs> that was a lifetime ago. That's oh, awesome. Oh, my though. gosh. That's super cool, yeah. man. You have any other passions we should know about? Um, other than cars and mini bikes? 
Just family. Uh, okay. <laughs> we spend a lot of family time. Uh, so you got two kids? Yep. You got a wife? Yep. You got your dad? Yep. You got your brother? Yep. My okay. mom? Yep. That, oh, good. I'm glad we didn't run that. <laughs> <laughs> You got any no, uncle? I got dogs, cats. Oh, you, so you, you have dogs? <laughs> yes. What kind of dogs you got? I got three little dogs. Chihuahuas. Damn right. You, I got, for, I got, you don't seem like a chihuahua kind of guy. I have one chihuahua and then two little like Jack Russell Terrier mix. Oh, and, I love Jack Russell. And three cats. Nice. Okay, you love cats more than dogs? Dogs more than cats. Dang, Zane's going to beat you up. Zane's Wait, a cat person. I'm a dog person. Oh, he's a dog We've person. We've talked about this. I treat my dog basically like a son. <laughs> I, he enjoys way more privileges than the cats do. And I give my cats people names, which is great. So. All right, what are they? Dave. Nice. Fred. Tim. And Dwight. <laughs> oh, Dwight? Yeah. From, I like it. <laughs> from The Office, by yes, any chance? Yes. Do you okay. watch The Office? Oh, yes. I would say that would be my number one series that I watch is The Office. Office is good. You know what else I watch? What's that? Friends. Friends was good. Do you actually watch Friends? I've watched or it when you it was have? on TV back in the day when you had to wait for it. <laughs> Dang. I hated Friends, and I finally just watched it, like sat down and just binged it with my wife. I'm like, man, I love Friends. And then I made it a point to talk about it on the podcast every every episode. He has brought it up literally every podcast that we've done really? so far. Yeah. So that everyone knows how much I love Friends. And also we can see the evolution of him when he talks as each season ends. He like gives a little recap and everything. We have a whole segment at the end of the podcast where he just talks about Friends. It's nuts because Rachel is pregnant right now with Ross's baby. That's <laughs> Damn. I'm sorry, did I just give away too much? <laughs> Spoiler alert, guys. Cut. Yeah. Cut, cut, cut. Um, may I do? Yeah, I was, I, I was about to get into it because I want to know these answers. Okay. Jesus. I have a couple of random questions that we're going to ask you. Okay. We're going to aim for four. We'll see what time provides. First question is going to be, if there are aliens, what do you think they look like? Little and green with big eyes. Okay, cool. So far, everyone has been a traditionalist. But it, yes. it, it, it must come from a movie that you've seen. Can you draw? Just every a movie, pretty much. Okay. okay. All right. For me, I always think of, uh, I guess, E.T. style. Yeah. Kind of a scrotal alien. <laughs> Like, like, kind of so it's more like the ones from Attack from Mars, that old movie. Okay, that, okay I also see that depicted as well. <laughs> All right, so if you were to be a Pokemon, what would you be? <laughs> oh, goodness. We already know he's a Charizard. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm oh, sorry, keep okay. going. No, no, I, you know what? This one, this one's for you, Jason. All right. If you were a Friends character, what would you be? Ooh. Who would you be? Joey. That's such a Joey that thing. Is a jo- you are a Joey, man. You're such a Joey. <laughs> Okay, so bring it back mini bike related. Would you ever go 100 miles an hour on a mini bike? Say quarter mile. If I had a bike ready for you and said, this will hit 100, I want you to pin Absolutely. it and go. You would do it? Yeah, I've already done 87 on a little Z50, so. Dang, how did 87 feel? Like 200 on a big bike. <laughs> 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 Looking down and realizing you're on snowblower tires is a little scary. <laughs> Have you ever been on a drag strip? Drag racing cars, yes. But not with a mini bike. bike, Okay. I just fear going 100 miles an hour on a mini bike. Mini bikes, sometimes, a lot of times, the wheels aren't true. Yeah. Sometimes you just had some bearings that you just popped in there, and hopefully they're still good. You have this hopped up engine doing 30 horsepower or whatever, going something nuts. I always fear that something's going to break down while I'm trying to hit 100. That's when you just close your mind and go for it. If it happens, it happens. That's when you just say, it'll be fine. and You, you just give it full <laughs> send. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to bring you down to a uh, drag strip one time and just see you send it. That's fine. Would you wear a full getup? Oh, absolutely. Do you have a full getup? No. Okay. <laughs> At least a helmet though, right? Yes. Yes. Nice. Ride, ride a helmet though. anytime I go on the trails or out racing. Putzing around, I'm pretty bad about it, but I try to keep them on for the most part. It's all right. Now, since you had kids, did you ever ride a mini bike with them in your lap? Absolutely. That's how they learn. Yep. Right? Okay. I do the same thing. Did you does, ever... it, does it like build equilibrium, you think? Kind of like gives sure. up, gets them used to being on it and the tilting a little. Oh, yeah. and, okay. 100%. I think it's good because then you can talk to your kiddos and be like, all right, we need to look left if we want to turn left. I think it kind of helps them out. Yeah, yeah and then age. let them grab the brakes and figure out how it works, yeah. run the throttle and learn that stuff on your laps. Do you oh. know how young you got your kids into mini bikes? So my son, probably three or four. My daughter was probably seven. I think around three. I think even before three, like as soon as they were able to sit their head up, we have like a little electric bike that mm-hmm. they can sit in my lap and it's not crazy. I'm not going to whiskey throttle it yep. or anything. 
which I have done, but not with the kid in my lap. <laughs> I think that is good. You can talk to them. It's a bonding experience. They are always going to remember it. I love getting footage of it. I think I've got my kids riding when they were around four or five years old on, yep. on their on a little electric mini bike. Yep. So that's like hey, my son. Your mom just messaged us. Oh, She's yeah. proud of you. Oh, that's so nice. Thanks, oh. mom. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Shout out to my mom. <laughs> Shout out to M <laughs> Mrs. Kozad. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so my son's first custom bike that I did him was one of Evan Rubel's micro bikes. That was pretty sweet. So we put the little BMX, like those micro BMX tires on it, so they were gum on the outside. Yeah. And then we did a custom seat that actually the welting around the sides of the seat lit up. So it was the first nice. one that was ever done like that. So nice. it was really cool. So that's kind of what kicked it off for him. He loved that. We ended up selling that bike. No, stop selling these bikes. I know. <laughs> Can't keep them all though, because I might have room for the next one. Exactly. I feel, I feel like, man, that's the one that your son first wrote. I feel like that's something you might want to nostalgically just keep. Yeah, but I mean, he enjoys kind of going through and helping build them too. Okay. So kind of the same thing. So it's not something we talk about it before they go <laughs> well that's what it's teaching him that like you can let the thing go i feel yeah. like you're teaching him a good lesson about why you know you can collect things but also recognize that maybe you don't need everything exactly you know? that's exactly. good that's an awesome lesson to have oh yeah yeah but the whole thing is he who has the most toys wins oh you're, that not i the... still think i got a lot <laughs> okay. yeah but we're not no one's gonna beat tim then tim's just gonna win tim's got the most toys yeah yes. tim does have the most toys yeah <laughs> Hit him with another one of them randos. I'm going to hit him with a rando, baby. Um, so first rando, what's the scariest thing you've ever seen? Um, it was actually a few years ago. We were leaving my neighborhood, and I watched a guy on a motorcycle get hit by a car. He oh. flew way over the whole front of the car, hit the street, and I ran out there. And the second I was out there, he was already dead. You, you knew. Yeah. Oh, so no, like you I was the first on one. Dead body. Yeah, yeah. So that one really hit hard for me. So. That's Mini tough. biking ain't easy, y'all. Yeah. Or motorcycling ain't exactly, easy. Exactly. Wear your helmets. Be and careful. And he was fully geared, which made it hard. Oh. When you're 30 foot in the air, you don't really. No, you're not. Well. Yeah, you're not coming back. I, I remember one time I saw. I thought I had seen something similar to that, and luckily the guy got back up. I saw a guy get rear-ended by a taxi oh. on his motorcycle in New York, and he like flipped over the front of it. So the bike got messed up, and he just like got back up and was like, "I'm fine." Yeah, and I, mean, I was like, "Damn, I thought I thought this dude was dead." And I, and I did pretty good i mean it's your natural instinct to go out there and try to make sure everybody's okay and yeah. you know my son was with us and and my wife told she knew it was coming she told him to look away he listened and did so okay. i sent them back home and i stayed on site until someone got there and so it worked out pretty good so just under pressure just having that instinct to be able to like know what to do feels pretty good you know what yeah like yeah. you know how you'd respond in exactly. that situation now, exactly. man. But yeah, that does sound, I mean, that's harrowing, dude. Yep, yep. Yeah, now that we've brought the mood super low and really <laughs> dug up some real traumatic yeah, shit stuff. Yeah, I, 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 heard you, I heard you went through his pockets and grabbed, grabbed his wallet and everything. No, holy oh, no, crap. Okay. I was trying to bring the mood up. I'm sorry. Hang on. <laughs> Good. Yeah, he's not here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, so, and then last question is if you could have any vehicle from anything in pop culture, what would it be? If you could ride or drive a vehicle, what would it be? So, I used to have a 1987 Monte Carlo SS. Okay. Um, it was fully original. It had 80,000 miles on it. I just bought it two days after I got it. It got stolen from me. Whoa. So that's my dream car is to find another one of those. Or just find your original find, one. I, get so, it and the funny thing is it's been about 15 years and I still carry around the keys and the title with me. Just, just in, in case. case. Just in, <laughs> just in case. Yeah. So I paid all that money and that's all I got for it is keys and the title. Is that thing down in Mexico now? Probably. <laughs> okay. Probably or in a chop shop somewhere. Dang, but, uh, man. Well, hey. Hey, if anyone out there has a Monte Carlo. <laughs> has to be an 87. 87 Monte Carlo SS. SS. Okay, if anyone's got one, reach out to this gentleman. Bernie's got to know where one's at. He, yeah, I've been checking the garage. Yeah, he does. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Jeremy, I want to thank you so much for coming out and hanging out with us today. Absolutely, thanks Actually, for Actually, thanks me. for coming, for driving. All. So how long was that drive? It was about 975 miles. So thank you for traveling 975 miles to come hang out with us, shoot the S with us, ride some go-karts with us, Absolutely. just really just hang out. You're a great guy, and hopefully we get to see you soon, all right, man? Oh, yeah, you will. Uh, all right. Thank you. Awesome, brother. So, thank everyone, you. if you have any comments for us, make sure to leave them down below. Until then, make sure to like, subscribe, and as always, boys, ride on. Right.